Okay, let us discuss this problem. So this says a uniform disk of radius r is a spin to angular velocity omega. So I have a disk and this disk is rotating with angular velocity omega and then carefully placed on a horizontal surface. So what we have, so this is my horizontal surface and on this horizontal surface there is a disk that is initially rotating with angular velocity omega. So let us say this is the axis by which initially it is rotated by angular velocity omega and now this is this disk is kept over a horizontal surface. Now question says how long the disk will be rotating if the friction coefficient between disk and the surface is mu. So friction for coefficient is given to you. You have to find what is the time after which this will stop. So this means final omega becomes zero. So what is that? An initial omega, let us call this as omega naught. Initial omega is given to you, omega naught. So this starts the motion. So this disk starts the most motion with omega naught and final angular velocity becomes zero. What should be the time? So you see, if somehow if I apply this equation, omega is equals to omega naught plus alpha t and in this expression I know the omega, I know omega naught, if somehow I can calculate alpha I can get the time. So now alpha is basically deceleration in this case. Why there will be deceleration? Deceleration because between disk and this surface there are some friction forces are acting. So this disk has a tendency to go this direction. So if I take, if I consider any point, so let me make another diagram. I think all of you are able to see or if you see here itself. So you see if you consider any a small portion of disk, let us consider a ring of the disk. So inside the disk if I consider ring, all point has a tendency to move this side but the, horizon, the horizontal table that is a static so the points on this, these are the points that try to slip this side so there will be friction force in this direction. So you see at all point of disk, so let us say this is my elemental ring, so at all point of ring there will be some friction force that will be basically directed tangentially and this omega is in this direction, so this will act in the opposite direction, are you getting? And this friction force will be mu times, let us say the mass of this ring is dm. So friction force will be mu times n and n will be dm into z. So this is the friction force. Are you getting? Now what is the torque of this friction force about center? So I can write d tau. Let us say this ring has distance of x. So from origin this is the x distance. So I will have torque is equal to mu mz dmg basically into x. Are you getting or not? I can make another diagram if you have some problem. So this is my elemental disk. This is my x. And at x I have considered thickness of dx. So this is my dx. And this is my elemental ring. Are you getting or not? So what will be the, let us say mass is dm. I can find what is the dm. dm will be, let us say mass per unit. So total mass of disk is m. So it is given to you, let us assume total mass is m. So m by pi r square that will give you mass per unit area that is sigma. So now in this case I can find dm is sigma into 2 pi x into dx. So this is my dm. Are you getting? Now d tau will be mu times dm. dm is 2 pi sigma x dx. So this is mu times dm into z into x. Now see d tau is basically variable. So let us write 2 pi mu sigma z x into x x square dx. Now you see this torque d tau is not constant. If you have uh, increased the x torque will increase. So this is a function of x. If I integrate from 0 to r I will get the total torque. So what you will have 2 pi 
mu and sigma if I want I can write sigma is nothing but m by pi r square are you getting so this is a small m let us say a small m pi r square are you getting or not so this is 2 pi mu sigma is m by pi r square I have already written into z and x square will be x q by 3 and this will be r q by 3 so what you will have pi pi goes out so you will have 2 by 3 r square r square goes here so you will have mu m z r so this is the torque that is acting now I can write equation that is torque is equals to I alpha so if I use that equation so this torque now this torque is basically negative so this try to decelerate so I can write torque is equals to I alpha so 2 by 3 mu m z r this is the torque is equals to I I is m r square by 2 because this is a disk so I can assume this is m r square by 2 and this is alpha but because alpha is decelerating so let us plug the value of minus here because this torque will decrease the alpha so this torque is basically negative so I can either put the negative sign this side or this side so from here I can find alpha so what will be the value of alpha so R R goes out so we will have 2 into 4 by 3 and then mu we will have G also we will have and 1 R this side so this divided by R minus this is equals to alpha now question said what is the time after which the system will come into the rest so now I will apply omega is equals to omega naught plus alpha t final omega system comes into rest so omega final is 0 is equals to omega naught alpha is minus 4 by 3 mu z divided by r and this into t are you getting or not so what is the time that is coming from here so if I solve for this I will have time is equals to 3 omega naught r by 4 mu z I think all of you are getting this result so you see in this problem one important point we have is to find out the torque of friction you see I cannot assume the torque is because friction force is a function of x so this is my distance x now the friction force here at elemental ring and it will have a different torque if the same friction force acts here and friction force also depends upon the area because normal reaction depends so if you increase the x the friction force will increase so if you increase x friction force will increase and torque due to friction force will increase and that's why I need integration are you getting, getting or not so that's why I need integration for d tau to find total torque I cannot find total torque without integration because torque is a variable it depends upon distance x from the center so this will give you total number of turns you can one can also find total number of turns so this is time if somebody asks what is the number of turns in that case you have to apply theta is equals to theta naught s is equals to ut that is okay so you will have ut that is omega naught into t minus half a t square in this case let us put plus half alpha t square so from here you will have theta is equals to omega naught is given to you and time is given to you 3 omega naught r by 4 mu z so 3 omega naught r by 4 mu z this is the time after which the system comes to the rest plus a half alpha we have already calculated this is a minus 4 mu z by 3 r so minus 4 mu z by 3 r so this is my alpha so half a t square and t is this so 3 omega naught r by 4 mu z and if you square this term are you getting or not 4 mu z and you can solve for this are you getting you can solve for this so this will be let us try to solve 3 omega naught square r 
by 4 mu z and he will have minus so this is 3 by 4 so 9 by 16 and I will have 9 by 16 4 into 2 so this is 2 so 3 by so we will have on the top 3 16 so we will have 8 so minus 3 by 8 omega naught square r square so 1 r goes out so we will have omega naught square r square 1 r goes out now mu square g square 1 mu z goes so we will have 8 mu z so from here if you take 8 mu z common or LCM you will have 6 minus 3 that is 3 omega naught square r so this is the theta number of revolution if somebody asks then you will have theta by 2 pi in that case you will have 3 omega naught square r by 2 pi that is 16 pi mu z so this is the number of terms that we will make before coming to the rest are you getting so this is a quite good problem we will discuss the next problem